talk about reactions and solutions. There's going to be two different uh, slideshows that we're going to go over. The first thing is, this is pretty simple, all right? Um, so we have solvent is what's getting, is what the medium that the solute's being dissolved in, okay? So solution is going to be a homogeneous mixture. What does homogeneous mean? Some of you don't know. I forgot. I take that for granted sometimes. All right. What does this term mean? Right here. All right. Uniform throughout. All right. Uniform throughout. So you can't really see a difference. I don't see any chunks of something in here. If I made it chunky, what would it be then? All right, heterogeneous. Heterogeneous. All right, a heterogeneous. Okay, heterogeneous. So we have solvent, solute. I think most of you are good with that stuff. Aqueous solutions. Anything that is in a reaction, unless otherwise specified as a solid um, or a gas, is going to be aqueous. All right, so it's whatever it is. So if I just pull over here, see this thing? It says magnesium chloride. It's aqueous magnesium chloride. Do you see any solid in there? No. So you always put the AQ designation by that. Aqueous solutions, whatever you dissolve, whatever it is. So that would just be MgCl2, aqueous solution. All right, electrolyte. Any substance whose aqueous solution will conduct electricity? Yes? There are only a handful of liquids bromine, water, mercury. All right, there's only a handful. You can have uh, like a liquid uh, covalence, but you can't have any um, liquid um, aqueous solutions that are outside of water. Okay? Uh, conduct electricity, any of these ionic compounds that are dissolved in water will conduct electricity. All right? Ionic compounds. Potassium hydroxide, sodium chloride, hydrochloric acid. They'll all produce ions in water. If they produce ions in water, it's going to be an electrolyte. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. So why is Gatorade, what's, why is Gatorade so good for you? Because of the electrolytes, like the sodium chloride that's in there. That's an electrolyte. So salt. So, I'm drinking salt? No, salt. Which is an electrolyte. So I want to drink salt and sugar, and I'm, and I'm good. I want to retain water in my body. Yeah. I don't know about retaining water in my body. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I really agree with that. <laughs> well, well, okay. Well, what happens when your cells get in a salty solution? I mean, you can drink salt. What, what, what happens? Water goes. Water goes. What water, water leaves and the cell shrinks. Yeah. You don't just drink endless salt. So then it becomes what type of solution? Oh, okay, so that's hypotonic. Your cells shrink. Do they like to be in hypotonic solutions? Yes. What do animal cells like to be in? Isotonic. Well, just something to think about. I always, that's always just a nice conundrum for me. All right. As opposed to non-electrolytes such as any sugar dissolved in water. All right, so here's the deal. And, and I've asked you a, a question on this before already. All right, and based on our lab, I said, all right, so I gave you the molecule of sucrose. All right, here's the difference. All right, you need to note this difference. Some of you have asked me some questions about this. All right, these will form ions. All right, these do not form ions. This sugar, if I was to dissolve sugar in a beaker, and then heat up the beaker and boil off the water, what would be there? Okay, so this will not break up. Will 
not break up. It only changes states. Yes? Yeah, there won't be salt. There'll form back in. Salt will do that too. It is an aqueous solution of salt, yes. That forms ions. Na pluses and Cl minuses. Okay. Alright, but it will it'll, it'll sink back together. Once all the water's gone, it's, yeah, it's gonna go back together. That will not form ions. Any sugar will not form ions. Alright. Or any alcohol. Alright, or any alcohol. All right, so now you could have brought in, you know, electrolyte type of thing. All right, those will not conduct electricity. What are these alcohol names? Um, methanol. 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 Ethanol. 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 Methanol and ethanol. Very good. All right, methanol and ethanol. Very good. You will probably see, randomly see that on the free response part of, you know, naming it's ethanol. They'll probably give you the structure or something like that. But, I mean, I'm just saying, you probably will see it either on your free response for the AP exam, my final exam, midterm, the structure. I can give you the structure and ask you to do the bond enthalpy of it. Yes. Enough that you can finish on time. All right. As a general rule, ionic solids dissociate, therefore, into ions into an aqueous solution. The partial charge on the oxygen and the partial charge on the H always allows water to interact strongly and pull out the ions into crystal lattice. Thus, ionic compounds are strong electrolytes. I'm going to give you a, a model here to play with in a little bit. All right? Thus, ionic compounds are always strong electrolytes. All right, here we go. All right, oh, what's that mean? Partially negative. Partially negative. Why? Why is this partially negative? This is polar, all right? My electronegativity difference, 2.1. What's this? 3.5. 3.5 is a 1.4. That is a large electronegativity difference. It's going to make this, what did I do, part calc? What am I doing? Partial negative, all right? Because it's polar, it has an electronegativity difference. What's the shape of this? It is bent. What's the hybridization? What's the angle? All right, good. All right, good. So he learned something on that. That's good. Okay. All right, so this is bent. So now, where is that going to be attracted to? Where is that going to be attracted to? My line of ionics. All right, the positives. All right, the positives. All right, there are my positives. All right, so look, it's going to yank that positive ion. And then oxygens are going to surround it. So now let's say it's sodium, Na+. I have it surrounded by all the oxygen parts of the water. All right. These are my little soldiers. They're going to keep doing that all over the place. All right. For molecular compounds. All right. Uh, 
the structural integrity of the molecule is maintained. Substance may dissolve, but generally won't split into ions. Thus, molecular compounds tend to be non-electrolytes. The major exception, which is a recurring theme in here, is ammonia in water and, and figuring out how that works and, and different things, how we form a little bit of uh, NH4+, plus, ammonium, etc. All right, so we have a couple major exceptions. Ah, what do we have here? What is this thing? I don't even know. What is that? What? Ah, which is what? Sulfuric acid. Very good. All right, so we have ammonia, sulfuric acid. Those are some exceptions that are going to take on some different parts of this. All right. Oh, here come my soldiers again. All right, when molecular compounds do split into ions, it's called ionization, not dissociation. All right, so you're going to hear the term ionization versus dissociation quite a bit for the rest of the year, pretty much. All right, for the rest of the year, you're going to hear that a lot. All right, so I'm going to ionize. H2SO4, maybe to H2SO3 minus, maybe something like that. Okay. HSO3 minus. HSO3 minus, then SO3 2 minus. That's going to ionize. Okay. All right. Strong electrolytes are almost completely um, as ions in aqueous solution. There's only going to be a one-sided arrow. We're starting to get you into equilibrium now. Now you're going to start seeing arrows go back both ways. Major emphasis of this course. All right, we're going to deal with one way so far. All right, a one-sided arrow. Now, if I have something else, maybe a weak electrolyte, it's going to have an equilibrium. Only a small concentration of ions are going to go uh, reach equilibrium. Right? So we have a double-sided arrow. Right? Pretty soon we'll be doing the math with that double-sided arrow. Figuring out how much H plus is actually made. How much acetate ion is actually made. Are we doing uh, replacement reactions anytime soon? That's it's all kind of incorporated. Um, okay, so yeah, it's really not really a recurring theme of this class. We get to do some on our own. All right, um, all right. So that's acetic acid. All right, acetic acid is being what? What is we? What do we call this? What is this versus this? What's up here? Dissociated ionized. So what will the enthalpy, how would the enthalpy be affected? How would the enthalpy be affected by what? Because uh, so Plus, since the error goes both ways, how do we calculate the change in enthalpy for How would you change? Because how would you calculate the enthalpy? Because wouldn't, it, because wouldn't it, the enthalpy be the same? Because the amount of energy needed is going to be the same either way. No, because this arrow is going to be uh, is going to be very small this way and much more this way. So you have, you can't do that. It's not the same calculation. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's not the same process. All right, another one for you is hydrofluoric acid, which is weak. All right, so we're going to have a lots of reactants left and very few ions formed. So hydrofluoric acid is weak. Now it comes to the point where we have to memorize the seven strong acids. On that sheet I gave you at the beginning of the year, things I need to know for the AP exam that I don't know yet, that paper, that comes out of the next slide where we have to memorize these seven strong acids. All right, double arrow. Okay, so the seven strong acids that we need to know from memory, 
Why do we have to know it? We have to know it for a couple reasons. Because everything else is weak, which means that there's going to be an equilibrium. These seven are strong asses, and we're going to put close to strong bases in a minute, but they completely ionize. That's very fortunate for you if you get one of these. They're going to completely ionize. All right, what does that mean? You're only going to make the ions. So real quick, if I was to, to ionize chloric acid, what would I get? Dissociate it. If I dissociated it, what would I get? H plus? ClO3 minus. Okay, that is dissociating it. All right, so the strong acids, the strong bases, let me move this over here. All right, are the, are the hydroxides of lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. Those are the strong bases. There's eight of those. So real quick, let's just write down what they are. I know you, you probably have it, but what is the formula for cesium hydroxide? Just the formula of cesium hydroxide. CSOH, it will completely dissociate into CS plus and OH minus. All right, what about calcium hydroxide? What is it? OH parentheses two. It will completely dissociate. How do I do that? CA what? CA two plus plus two OH minus. All right, what if I asked you aluminum hydroxide? How would you write it? AL? OH3? Okay. What would my arrows look like? Double arrow with the majority staying here, a little bit going there. I'd have AL what? Three plus three OH minus. All right. Why is it a double arrow? It's not a strong base. Do you see aluminum listed over there on the right? So it's not a strong base. That means it cannot just dissociate. It has to ionize. It's only going to ionize a little bit. If I actually try to dissolve that. I have to heat it up a lot to get it to dissolve. All right, that's what we're talking about. Yes. How do we know if it's in equilibrium or if it's like normal? Why is this? You don't need to know that yet. All right, you just need to know basically what I've been saying to this point. All right, so again, all of these. Let me circle all of this. How do we classify this? Ionize or dissociate? <coughs> These strong acids and bases dissociate. All right, they're going to dissociate. Anything else is going to ionize. All right, all right. Yes. You don't have to worry about the arrows so much yet. Don't worry about the arrows so much yet. Y'all getting hung up on the arrows. All right. All right, there is a little, did you see that? You missed that. There are my acids. Here are my bases. All right, be careful to distinguish between dissolution and dissociation ionization in regards to strongs or weaks. For example, acetic acid completely dissolves, but ionizes only slightly. So what does that mean? If I had solid acetic acid, it's going to dissolve completely in water.
but it's only going to make a certain amount of ions. So the electrolyte, if I put a light bulb, that thing we're doing over here with that light bulb, if I put that in vinegar, it's not going to light up the light bulb that much. That's what we're trying to say. But therefore, it's a weak. On the other hand, barium hydroxide dissolves very little, but the amount that dissolves dissociates almost completely. Barium hydroxide is a strong electrolyte. Okay. All right. The question is, all right, of the amount that dissolves, what fraction dissociates or ionizes? That's what we have to figure out. All right. If most of it does, it's going to be strong. And then if not, not much. Weak. All right. I like bearing it in the way. Doing work, doing work. Reps. So, uh, I'll send you in the way. Wait, All right. Most is mean like greater than 50%. Like when the most is mean. Uh, you're going to be calculating that number. Okay. What number would be most? Yeah. If it's an ionic compound, most. If it's a covalent molecule, weak. You'll see. It's a large number. Large number. All right. So precipitation reactions. All right. Our solubility guideline. You do not get this. Some of you had instructors and they have given you said list before. You don't get it. You have the reference sheet. Is there solubility rules on it? No. No, 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 no. All right. So soluble. All right. Soluble. Anything that is soluble is called, is going to be aqueous in solution. All right, precipitation reactions are a solution that form an insoluble product. The insoluble product is a solid. All right, this is a solid. So two liquids are poured together and we get a solid. All right, reactions that are insoluble product, a solid. All of these, what you're going to be, what you would be tested on, are soluble. All right. Any alkali metals, nitrates, ammoniums, acetate, halogens, not including the F, sulfate, and it does have a couple exceptions. Anytime you're mixing silver with something, lead with something, most likely it's going to be insoluble. All right, so you did a homework on this. Insolubles, phosphates, chromates, carbonates, Sulfides and hydroxides. Couple exceptions. Alkali metals and ammonium. And except with ammonium and strong base cations. Any questions? Okay. Don't have to focus on that a ton. Not a ton. All right, so um, here we go. A couple other uh, ones that we already just had on there. Um, Yeah, pick which one you want. 
you want. Alright, so maybe you can uh, figure out how you want to apply that to what you're doing. Alright? Now we get to see if you know what you're doing. Alright, oh, okay, here's a couple more, sorry. A couple more. Yes, you got it. Group seven. Allergens are 17. All right, there you go. I'm trying to get you to remember it. So, suppose you mix two of those. Go ahead and write the equation and see what is soluble and insoluble. See if you actually got any of that. People at Tempe had humor that I found in life. Solutions. All right. Let's see. PB. Bless you. All right. For those of you that have never done this before. I am going to do this. Take this guy, and I'm going to move him to that guy. I'm going to take this guy and move him over there. Yeah. Yes, that's why I asked if we were doing double replacement reactions. I missed this. I didn't know that was cool. All right. So, if I do that, I would have NA. NO3. Do I need parentheses or anything like that? Why not? Plus one, minus one. Are nitrates soluble or insoluble? So that means I make it AQ plus PB. What was the charge on PB originally? Two. Two. And I is what? And that is a solid. That is inside. Iodide, lead to iodide is inside. Okay, but then we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Now I have to figure out what makes up 
Got to balance it. Balance it. I'll change colors to black. Got to balance this. How many PBs? How many nitrates? So I got to have two over here. I just changed the amount of sodium. I put that there. I changed the amount of I Okay, I'm good. But I'm not done yet. Not done yet. What do you got going on there, Tank? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Close that on up there. It's just a distraction. All right. Okay. Uh, we're not done yet. We have to figure out what makes up this solid. So all of these are aqueous. So that means they all break up. So all I need to know is what is going to make that up. So these all break up into their ions. Pb2 plus and 2NO3 minus, right? This guy's going to break up 2Na plus and 2I minus. Okay, this guy breaks up, he's aqueous, 2Na plus and 2NO3 minus. So these are all what we call going to be spectators. All right, so we got to figure out anything that's not making this is a spectator. So we just kind of cancel it out. All right, so let me get a green in here. Anything the same on this side, on this side? Well, of course there are. Two nitrates, that's gone. Two sodiums, that's gone. And I'm left with these things that do not cancel because this is in a compound. PB2 plus plus 2I minus. So I write that down. PB2 plus aqueous plus 2I minus aqueous. And that's the equation. That's the equation. For the person that's the equation. That's the equation. Everything else doesn't matter. That's the equation. Well, what's that equation? No, that's the equation. For that reaction, that's the equation. There is nothing else. Nothing else matters. Nothing else is counted. Nothing else is seen by AP except mistakes if you don't write that. For the lead iodide? That's it. That's it. That's it. There is nothing else. So what you need to do is always figure out the precipitate, balance it out, and then write whatever makes up the precipitate. That's all they want. Anything else is a mistake and it is wrong. Okay? What? If you had all this other stuff, that doesn't count. It's wrong. All this up here. Why doesn't it know what? It's already in a compound. 